Oh, hey, it's unlocked. Well, duh, the doors are open. You want to go inside? No? Bro, let's go inside. You're actually going in, huh? Yeah, of course. What? Well, it's oh, unlocked. Bro. I mean, you know, if it, you know. Come on. If the driver didn't want people going in, he wouldn't have left it unlocked. That's fair. Are you sure the owner's not going to find out about this? Nah, check that out. That looks a bit peculiar. Well, I'm just trying to design my own racetrack. Well, come to think of it, why would anyone leave their car door open? So what are you guys doing? What the f- Hello, welcome to Short Shift. I'm Ryan. I'm Krish. And behind us, we have a very heavily modified Audi S4, graciously lent out to us by no other than that blue S4. Woo! <laughs> God damn. <laughs> That's sir. good. Okay. All right. So, obviously, we're going to start off with some exterior mods, right? So what if we start out with the carbon hood? Why? So carbon hood, um, it's actually lighter and you know, it's a uh, function over form mainly, lightweight, plus the heat release as well because it's vented. And again, it, it looks cool, you know, something different as well. That's fair. Um, also, I was actually also wondering this too. Uh, it looks, personally, I think it looks really good, but you know, there could also be an issue with water seeping into the intakes, especially just water logging your engine, right? So how do you get around that? So for that, um, the vent is actually closed. There's a mold underneath, which I can open it up with a bunch of screws. Um, and once it's open, uh, it's, it's good. I've, I've only opened it like once or twice, to be honest. But what happens is the water just stays there. Uh, plus, if it rains heavy, I also have a, uh, a hydro guard on the intake as well. Uh -huh. Plus, I would take the necessary steps, right? Masking tape, microfiber towels, and all that. And also, I wouldn't really get out when it's raining heavy. That's you know? fair. But if I'm yeah. stuck, I have those uh, options there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Actually, I did notice one more thing. You, you know how like you have those old muscle cars with hood pins? Yeah. yeah. You have like a modern version of hood pins on this. Or, like, you know, you just... It's actually a hood clip. Uh, oh, funny story. I was cool. on the highway, and sign came on that my hood is open. Ooh. And uh, those things saved me. And plus, where I got it installed from, they said yeah. they wouldn't even install it without the hood pins. PPF as well. <laughs> uh, the install was uh, expensive because there's literally nothing underneath those hood pins. Yep. So they had to mold a piece from there to the radiator support. Um, and then they had to make that mold as well underneath because it was fully vented. Yep. So, yeah. All right. Shall we talk about the rims as well? Yeah, for sure. White rims, want... right? It's, it looks great, but, you know, how do you keep it clean? <laughs> <laughs> Man, white rims. I, I wouldn't recommend doing it, to be honest. But they do look cool. Um, I usually spend about 20, 25 minutes on each wheel, uh, cleaning the inside barrel and you know getting the brake dust off. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have track brakes on this, so the brake mm -hmm. dust is just crazy. Yeah. Um, another Sorry. thing is the wheels are <laughs> ceramic coated, mm -hmm. uh, so it's a bit easier to clean. But other than that, like there's no there's no getting away from it. The white rims, white yeah. wheels, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. I also do like the sort of arrow, like the very aggressive arrow you have here, especially the canards. Yeah, 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 that looks really cool. They're from TAC Carbon and specifically made for this model, 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, the bumper is totally different than 17 and 18 models or 2020 plus models. Oh, yeah. And because of that, only a few things fit the car. And this was one of them. Um, this was mainly for, you know, looks. Uh, makes it look more aggressive, as you can already see. And it's very tastefully done, you know, oh, yeah. I might add. Because normally, you know, people go, like, with crazy colors, and, like, yeah. they kind of make it look really tacky. This, it just, you know, you have carbon here, carbon here, carbon really little, little places. And just, it's very it's, consistent. It's very consistent, that's right? That's because a lot of people way. tend to just put a carbon hood and do nothing anywhere else. And then it just looks like, well, why is there a carbon hood here, right? Does it really yeah. need it? This, it all just, it's all a part of the look. And I think it just, it's blended and very meshed very well. And, you know, honestly... You have very good taste. Right, thank you. Well thank add. you for that. I didn't want the headlight to be yellow. Mm. So the actual high beam or low beam, they're white, whereas this is yellow. So, And let's get to the elephant in the room. Street equipped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> big banner here. What is that? What, what is Street Equip? So myself and my partner, we run Street Equip. Uh, we do sell parts for Audis 20, 12 and up. Uh, we try not going too old because there's not much available. Or if there is something available, other companies are already running it. We try to come up with new stuff. Um, majority of it is on the inside. Exterior, we're still working on it. But yeah, we sell Audi stuff, BMW, Teslas, Volkswagens. Um, and we're expanding. We're always expanding. So that's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that shameless plug. But... Yeah. <laughs> but worth worth calling out because he does great stuff and it's quality stuff. it's it's quality stuff this is also tastefully done these uh yellow turn signals eh? yeah so uh they're amber and uh batchkin was able to just put a yellow skin on it mm -hmm. just for looks mm -hmm. kind of flows yeah. well with the drls and they've done some work on the rear end as well mm -hmm. gotta say it's some great. tasteful carbon uh accents over there yeah it's pretty good <laughs> the you carbon i love carbon door handles. <laughs> i do want to talk about the shape of the car it's very distinctively audi right you you want you're not mistaking this for any other car Shoulder in the road. especially that's yeah. that's audi yeah of course the way the body line starts at the headlight and then ends all the way to the tail light all right let's move to the back so now that we're at the back so that, that that's great what back yeah right yeah yes yeah right it's by squeaky clean air and it's the shocks and the full kit from him uh I don't know what it is. It's just German cars, bag. It just goes well. Yeah. You can see it. It's a show car <laughs> material right there, honestly. It is, it is Less so than a cool. Figure of the baseline. Yeah. yeah. And why that stir? The, the stripe? Yeah. It's the theme that I've got going on. The uh, steering wheel has the German flag as the center stripes, uh, white pedal shifters, so white wheels. And then the brake calipers are German flag, as you can see. I feel like it's a bit too much sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, ah, it kind of stands out. So I personally think it's tasteful. I don't know why. I some I for some reason I like how it looks. It's not it's, bad. It, it could be a lot worse. I that think it's metallic, right? It's metallic. I love the gloss with the black and yeah. stuff. And yeah. so it goes from like pearlescent to basically matte to regular gloss paint. And it's the same material used inside on the seats as well, so oh, yeah. it matches. At least there's some continuity there. Exactly. Yeah. The slip spoiler looks amazing. Real carbon fiber, right? Real carbon fiber. It's the PSM style. It's actually from a BMW. And I just wanted something aggressive, and this was it at the time. Mm -hmm. um, it looked very aggressive. It looked very M, actually. Like, you know the oh, M yeah. cars? It does actually look very M because that, almost. That zip over here? Yeah. Like, that's definitely an M thing. Definitely. But it works so well in this. But I think you did it better. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill me. What's next? Like, the heart Audi. Uh, Emblem. I think it looks great. Fight me. I, I, I personally I... don't like it. We're gonna fight. We're gonna fight it out. I'll win. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. It, it feels unnecessary. It feels a bit ricey, but I think it looks nice. Okay. It's it's a great. Okay. How you, come you judge, Miata right? girls can get away with putting pink heart toe tags on their car? Everyone thinks, oh my god, it's so cute. But then a man can't have a nice black heart Audi badge on his car. Like, Come on, That's man. So I'll jump in. I just exactly. want to say it. girls love it. Exactly, girls absolutely love it. Bro. He's got the car res, okay? <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> These are Euro taillights. They're clears. Uh, North America never got them, right? Yeah, no. So these are uh, literally clears. There's no blinker. It's just a sweep when you signal. So I get asked a lot of times that uh, where'd you get these from? Um, how are they? This and that. But Overall, like I just, the, the rear end just looks so much better with this because the OEM ones are red mm -hmm. and they also have a blinker when it sweeps. Small touches for some people, but to be honest, uh, when you see it, it just, it flows well. The turn signal yeah. also is amber, just oh. like the side mirror plus the front lights as well, so it matches. The previous one, it was red. It was a red sweep and the brake light would blink. Now it's just amber. Do you have the full sequentials? Yeah, full sequentials, yeah. Audi light design. <laughs> <laughs> all right moving further down you get these reflector stickers right yeah so that's again badge skin um i had them tinted earlier just flat black basically now that the rear uh, sorry the new rear bumper has the honeycomb you can see that they did the honeycomb pattern on the reflector as well which is a really nice touch yep. uh something simple but yet when the light shines on it 
you could see it reflect the red out of it. Yeah. And it shows the honeycomb. Pack. You really went all out. Yeah. That's Small cool. little details. How much are you into the rear end, actually? Just the rear end? Yeah. Yeah. How, uh, how many kidney payments was that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, minus the exhaust? Uh, no, with yeah. the exhaust. With the exhaust. Oh, boy. Let's, let's go all in. Balls deep. Uh, around seven. Seven grand. That's seven really grand, yeah. Thought. It's, that, the, it's the diffuser and the taillights that are pricey. Bro, seven grand. Uh, and we're talking a, Canadian too, right? You could get too, a right? B8 A4 for that. <laughs> yeah. 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 And the exhaust work. I had to yeah. play with it in order to get it perfect. I did have a different diffuser before and uh, it didn't fit perfect. It had bends and cracks and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I used to have like yellow or red stripe going all across. Yeah. Um, I, I personally didn't like it, but I had to do it because it showed the crack mm -hmm. if I didn't put the pinstripe. Yeah. So now I've got a new diffuser, it's SD Carbon. Um, and this fits like a glove. Overall That's exterior, mm -hmm. I think it was pretty good. As a whole package, definitely. For sure. I think uh, it's convinced me to start looking into S4s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very financially responsible. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah I get it. it. It's one of the nicest builds out there. Actually, I think this. I don't think I've seen an Audi build cleaner than this so far. Like when it when it comes to like being C, like not SEMA worthy, of course, but I just say it's very unique. And very yeah, it's product. it's close there. It's very it's very close to a almost SEMA build. Just small rough edges here and there that again over time it's three years of love and labor that's gone to this car. This car's actually driven. SEMA cars in most cases aren't. Yeah. Right, so if you know this was not to be driven, this was to like just be fully restored, just like with really small things here and they're like small chips and stuff. And see, the cars are made for other people to exactly. you know, get inspiration off, and exactly. I go based on that too. I've seen some S4s built there, yeah, and I'm like, okay, I want to make it look like this, or I want these wheels, or this and that, right? You get it, you get examples from there and, and go from there, but yeah, I would say I personally built it for myself, I mm -hmm. enjoy it. I look at it. I open the. I go to the garage so many times, and I just. I, I sit I just there look at, at it every day. I'd just I be would. grabbing a bag of chips. <laughs> I'd sit on your sofa, just start looking yeah. at that. Like I, I yeah, it, it's eye candy. Yeah. And and the thing is, uh, with with white wheels, mm -hmm. kind of looks like a Subaru. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Really maybe right. if had gold rims, yes. Gold rims, yeah. Gold rims, yeah. Then I'd I had them see. in the past. Okay. Uh, matte there bronze, go. and then I had matte black. It's white. Let's see what the next one. White's comes. my favorite one so far white aesthetically, favorite. but I know it's a pain in you know what yeah to it certainly pops. Yeah. it adds to the car like the white so i think i think this is my yeah. favorite build so far yeah in all in all we honesty that's how i was kind of stoked to, yeah. to yeah, you know have a crack at this car just simply because it's again as i said it's near perfect in every like you know if you look at it from here like only the owner actually knows what's wrong with it really <laughs> yeah. yeah like i can't see any faults with it and i've seen this car multiple times also if you do see the owner uh Make sure to say hi. Don't swarm him or anything, you know. But yeah, it's it's a very distinctive car. You'll if you see it, you know, take a couple pics, tag him, tag us. You know, yeah, I, yeah definitely want to see how many times this car gets spotted. Oh no, definitely. But, yeah. uh, what it's missing is a short stiff decal. Oh yeah, coming yeah, soon. Maybe uh, eventually. Who knows? That. Probably. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> For sure, we'll do it. All right. So now we're all in the interior. Let's start off with the steering wheel. I'm gonna hold it every day. Every time I drive it, I'm going to hold it, right? And I'm going to look at That's it. True. It's going to be in my vision. Um, so this was it. And the typical Audi steering wheel is it's too skinny. Mm -hmm. And with the S models, what they do is they do just full leather. Not even perforated or not Alcantara. The full leather, it just it doesn't work, to be honest. Like when you're taking turns fast or whatnot, it just feels weird. Mm -hmm. Plus it being too small, skinny feeling. It, it just... Again, didn't work out. Now I have perforated leather here on the side for grip and uh, a bit thicker uh, carbon on the top and bottom. It, it just adds on to the drama there. Like it, it's, it feels more sporty, you can mm -hmm. say. Uh, the airbag cover has been changed as well to kind of match the leather that's out there. Mm -hmm. um, gloss back logos, obviously, and you can see the white pedal shifters. These are the Urus ones and German flag as the center stripe. Yeah. And where'd you get that from? That's from Street Equip. Ah, uh, oh, okay. So it can be custom made for any model. As I mentioned, we work with cars 2012 and up. Mm -hmm. um, and we also provide airbag covers, okay. uh, paddle shifters, custom ones, magnetic, and matte carbon, Alcantara, you name it. 
because honestly, it looks customer. pretty good quality. You can easily make this look OEM plus. And mm. on the topic of carbon, there's a lot inside. <laughs> like this on the dash, you know, on the door <laughs> card, on the on the yeah. center console. Uh, there's a lot, honestly. So a lot of it is OEM, which okay, is the good. yeah a uh, the AC unit, the door cards. The uh, button for the volume, uh, mm -hmm. th that panel right there, is, it's OEM. The added carbon is mainly the steering wheel plus the uh, gear shifter. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, Steer Equip does sell interior trim as well as carbon. So if you have aluminum trim from factory, you can swap it over mm -hmm. to uh, Black 12 uh, interior carbon trim. Yep. And it's perfect fit. And if you recall the RS7, right? Uh, how that has like these amazing door cards and stuff yeah can you just talk about how cool these look too it like is, it's, it's audi design Au again, audi's you know? door cards are so cool so how uh, audi's makes sense like, like the you know, use of materials yeah. and the mix of it like the the black yeah kind of uh leather on the top mm -hmm. chrome carbon fiber alcantara all of a sudden yeah and gray leather they're they're doing something here. and then you it's have like cool. you know deviated stitching that comes yeah. through here too which is nice so it actually it's actually it's I think so, it's real leather, yeah. So much design kick went, went into this. Process. Yeah, it's really so nice. So this is it? actually mm -hmm. rotor gray interior. Mm -hmm. You can get S models in red. I think it's Magna red, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then there's, uh, uh, not sure what the black one is, but there's black interior, red, or this rotor gray. Mm -hmm. So yeah. again, this spec is like famous in Europe. Mm -hmm. So you get Navarra blue with rotor gray interior. And personally, I wasn't a big fan of it. I'll, I'll give you that much gray just looks boring yeah and then it started growing on me because what happened here is that if you look at beside your thigh this panel it's gray oh, yeah right and red color it's actually black with red stitching in black interior it's black with white stitching same goes for the door handle too see how oh, really? it's gray mm -hmm. yeah. and the whole panel is gray so i think the gray is probably the best call in in the long run when it comes to it, because you know hindsight at the end of the day is 2020 right yep. didn't really know at the time but i think this was really the right call to make with this and yeah let's move on to this so that thing that <laughs> thing come on it's so cool it's, you know it's you know, really cool you know how they have these in ferraris yes um and i think doug miro actually talked about it in one of these videos so the reason they added that there is because normally teens would be taking their videos here mm. with of like the car accelerating yeah, and stuff. Passengers can do it. Passengers too now. have it now. Then you and can make your like it's customizable. Mm -hmm. You can change the views, everything, and I believe Shred Equip sells it as well. Yeah, um, yeah. So we partnered up with Bosch, oh, wow. um, and we, Bosch makes these screens, um, very very customizable. It works off of OEM connector. So uh, in the glove box, there's actually a CD player which mm -hmm. has a connector there, which controls okay. all the ambient light speakers, all that stuff, uh, you unplug that and then plug this into it. It nice. grabs all the data from the car itself. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't feel laggy at all. Uh, works really great. Looks really cool. It's something it, different, you know, because there was a fake cool. vent there. Yeah. And uh, that's true. it didn't really do much. You made use of it. Kind of like those Honda Civics with like those oh, continuous man. vent designs. Yeah. Yeah. This, this Another is Another Honda Civic reference. Honda right? Civic reference. <laughs> Uh, we know someone's gonna love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this big screen right here. So standard screen on this car is eight point two five inch, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. And this one right here is ten point two five inch. The extra inch on each side matters. Anyways. But uh, <laughs> it's pretty wide. It's familiar. Yeah, and it's um, it's touchscreen now. Touchscreen mm -hmm. plus the center knob works as well. The gauge cluster is also of an older style, if that makes sense, right? Analog gauges. It's analog, analog gauges and stuff. So it feels like nice analog gauges, but then you have like this like super high tech screen. It looks wrong. I think this sort of like LCD screen makes way more sense, in my opinion, to like have it like this. And it looks normal it's to most era people. Correct, exactly. I guess, it's era with correct. Pop up screen kind of design. And I think it's great. I would prefer yeah. this. And also, there's actually physical buttons for the AC unit. Oh, yeah. So yeah. if you click on any, yeah, there you go. I love that sort of stuff because I hate going into screens and having to change that. Yeah. So, so if I, you prefer something more analog, I guess, this is probably the best generation yeah. before whatever they're going to do. In the and future. most people tend to keep these cards for like six, seven years max. Mm -hmm. So exactly. This, I think, what it is, it's great. Although I know there's a virtual cockpit that you could have gotten with these. I think, well, did you select it or did you not want it? Or 
So when I was in the mm -hmm. market yeah. uh, looking for this car, there was only mm -hmm. three available. Yeah. Uh, one of them had the virtual cockpit, but mm -hmm. the exterior was Daytona gray yeah. and red interior. Mm -hmm. um, and it was actually out of my budget. Uh, I'll be honest. Yeah. That's so true. this was the other one. The other one was, I believe, tango red with black interior. Mm -hmm. The red just popped too much, too much <laughs> in your face. Yeah. And at that time, I had an A4 B9 2019 as well. Mm -hmm. Same color, Navara yeah. blue. Okay. So I was like, oh, you know what? I love the blue. I'll go for this. It didn't have the dash. And um, at that point, A4 B9, I mm -hmm. had had the virtual dash. Yeah. And now I have the B9.5 A5. It has the virtual dash. So I'm never missing it. I guess that's pretty much it for the interior. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right, so driving impressions of the S4. So not too long ago, we launched this car and we were just feeling, again, the outright acceleration this thing has. It feels sophisticated in the way where it doesn't feel like a 16-year-old with a eBay turbo bolted, this, bolted it onto the car. Very true. Yeah, but it actually feels like it came like this from factory. It feels very, almost too good in the sense that you know this doesn't feel like a modded like a self-modded product it feels like a factory race car and before we do continue let's just talk about the specs first mm -hmm. so from stock this thing is making about 340 350 uh, horsepower currently it's making 500 from the crank and with torque it's making about 600 stock is about 340 350 as well pound feet yeah and from that we can probably estimate how how much He's modded. Yeah, and thankfully we do know what he's modded so far. So we do have a catalyst downpipe. We have uh, an ECU tune. Mm -hmm. So he's also done a TCU upgrade, and then it just goes from there. So there's again a long list of modifications in there. Um, and he's, you know, coupled with the air ride, actually, this car feels really f not firm, but very nimble. Very nimble, yeah. It feels, it also feels like firm in the sense that it feels confidence inspiring it's like, a you know, stable kind it feels of very firm. stable like this thing seems like an autobahn killer mm. of course you know you have the brake squealing and everything this Upgraded actually brakes so yeah, this feels brakes like, good mm -hmm. it's just loud <laughs> but i think that's the whole point of this yeah. car right it's a factory race car mm -hmm. in my personal opinion and it drives like a two so it that's just a good feels part. like a two right and you know you can you can hear it uh it's like, you know under mild acceleration yep. It is incredible uh, to just drive because, again, I'm just taking, you know, on these back roads right now, and it is taking these corners quite well, honestly. <laughs> it's very Audi in the way it drives, and that's, again, I say that with due respect, and it's, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. The fact that it is, you know, the best of both worlds. You can tune a car for 500 horsepower to the crank, which doesn't sound that crazy. I think the M3 makes that, but, like, you know, again, it's a tuned car. This is an S4, not an... Like even the RS4 doesn't get come close to these power figures, and that's at about 444. So you're basically basically faster than an RS4, an RS5, really. Yep. While you know keeping the S4 engine and the tunability of the S4, this platform is infinitely moddable because of the three liter yep. V6 in this, and because of how yep. many of these A4 S4 platforms mm -hmm. there are. There's so many mods for it. You can just look through, like, the, like you can just do a Google search and immediately find a part for it. And also, the thing is, this mm -hmm. is more of an all-rounder car. BMW is yeah. great with performance. Mercedes great with luxury. This is right in the middle. It's good. It's not the best, but it's acceptable in both sides. Yeah. Where it's like a very good, like, all-rounder package yeah. that I can really recommend for everyone. For sure. Especially the fact that uh, you can easily find one for much cheaper nowadays than an m340i or a oh, c43 yeah. yeah which are the two other cars that compete with this and again the c43 i am not the biggest fan no. of no don't think about the c43 especially the yeah. inline four one don't think about it yeah it's not good the m340i uh personally would be my personal pick but when it comes to tunability nothing beats these three liter single turbo v6s it's they're on a league of their own and that's just audi audi's nature right audi has a lineup of very tunable engines they're ea triple eight which is also in Golfs, right? And the A4. The A4, right? And, you know, even the Q3, funny yeah. enough, right? No, who owns one? <laughs> but, uh, and then, you know, you have their 3-liter V6s that are known, you know, they're infamously moddable. Their V10s are crazy under booster, even their inline fives. Yeah, I'd say the V6s, unfortunately from factory, Audi detunes them quite a lot, but 
as you've seen right now, once you do start adding power, like even a stage one tune, this thing makes crazy power. <laughs> My God, <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. I I'm going uphill, but this thing just spools and crackles. It feels like a supercar on the inside. It sounds like one too. Now there are some drawbacks, of course, that the owner has done, and you know he's pretty transparent about them. I'm pretty transparent about them too. Um, so it comes down to the air ride. So the air ride, unfortunately, uh, even though he's on a coils anymore, he still will rub and still will sag if he's on tight bumps or has weight in the back or people in the back. So you do knock points for practicality there. Even the rear space for the passengers isn't the greatest. Yep. The three series actually kind of does better. Even the C-Class does a better but job. But that really depends on how you set up the suspension. You yeah. can easily have a more practical kind of suspension, a higher one, stuff like that. doesn't yeah. have to be low like this one. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can do more with air ride. It's just this owner uh, particularly uh, decided on a lower one. Even the exhaust rate, it's super loud. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if the microphone's yeah. picking it up, but it's pretty loud in here. Yeah. I've, I've been in worse. I yeah. we know a fella with a car that's quite loud. Yeah. And if he can daily it while going partially deaf, then I think yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this should, this one should be fine. Yeah. Sound is not an issue in this car, definitely. And I'm pretty sure he told me it's valve, right? Yeah, this is valve. So we're in com individual right now. I can uh, drop down to so valve currently open. If you're out of there, the car is really quiet. Like yeah. it feels stock even. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, it's kind of crazy to say about something that's been extensively modified with almost twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 poured into it, right? So, I again, I personally think that this is a win in my book. And I've really been uh, excited to try one of these. And I'm, again, just really thankful to Parkade for, you know, giving us a chance or giving us a shot to yeah. drive this car. So what did you guys think? Let us know if you felt the same about the car as we did. Huge thanks to Parkade for lending us and showcasing this car for us to share. Make sure to check out his Instagram and Street Equip, both linked in the description below. If you're still watching, here are some extra clips that weren't featured in the main parts of the video. Please enjoy. Okay, so while we're recording this, I noticed this sign up here, and I don't think he's being really um, friendly. Yeah. Crazy. I was crazy once. <laughs> they locked me in a room. A rubber room. A rubber room with rats. The rats made me crazy. Crazy! I was crazy. <laughs> I can just cut it, bro. <laughs> I get asked so many times, where'd you get the tail lights from? Can you pause for a second? Hey, that's your top gear. Okay. <laughs> of course, it's off the personal taste, but. Is this the car there or no? No. 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 Okay, I guess it's just ours. Um, yeah. I think maybe an hour, give or take. That's fine. That's fine. I hope we're not causing any issues. No, no, it's okay. Right. Thank you. <laughs> take care. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Bloopers. <laughs> Bloopers. All right. <laughs>